So if you are a member of the Church of Nazarene and you are here today and you're 15 and older, then you're going to get a chance to vote. We're going to do that after prayer time this morning. So um, when we do that, we'll have a little uh, a read a report and we'll set the voting ballot and the times and all that is uh, part of the church's tradition and part of who we are as a Nazarene church. We hold annual elections for our leaders and um, the leaders for some people that are willing to run and that's a good thing. So that's going to be going on today. If you're not here, if you're watching online and you aren't here, we're going to keep the voting open all the way till 1 p.m. Uh, so if you're watching online and you want to stop by the church uh, sometime before 1 p.m. to cast a ballot, you remember that you can do that. All right, um, a few things here. There's um, a thanks in here for Pastor Nancy for her birthday, um, which was actually the middle of the week we celebrated last week. Uh, attention to the PBS workers. Nancy needs your orders for shirts if you would like to get the official PBS shirt no later than April 29th. And I don't know if you know this, but that's coming right up because next week, next Sunday, we're going to be into May already. It's hard to believe. May 1st is going fast. Um, pancake breakfast. Um, if you like pancakes, that's coming up. I believe it is May 1st, which is this Saturday coming up. And the ladies, don't forget, there's some stuff in there for you. There's a craft show coming up. There's a craft night coming up. And a garage sale. Who doesn't like a garage sale? As a matter of fact, we went to a garage sale yesterday, and we bought the garage. We, uh, we brought it back, so uh, we saw some pictures online. We had some fun and adventures yesterday. Uh, moving buildings down the road, and it was lots of fun. So also, one last thing, uh, taco night, Cinco de Mayo, we thought would be fun. Uh, the teens and the children and the adults that show up for Bible study on Wednesday, May 5th. That is the middle, not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday. We're going to be having uh, a Cinco de Mayo taco night and some fun. But we we're going to do this as a group. So if you can bring some taco fixings, we've got the meat. We need like shells, we need tortillas, we need sour cream, tomatoes, onions, whatever. And a few desserts. So if you can bring any of those items, or if you plan on coming, please let Shelly know today. Because we don't want to have too much, and we definitely don't want to not have enough. Have you ever seen the look of hunger in the eye of a Nazarene when they run out of talk of meat? It's not great. Alright? So, um, so please let Shelly know today if you plan on coming, and if you can bring some of those little taco fixies. Today is the day the Lord has made. I will and be glad. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Look at one of the houses near you and say, the siding is looking good. Go ahead. Up. All right. So you stand with me as we open with the word of prayer together this morning. Our gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for this time to be together today. Lord, thank you for the goodness and mercy of your love in our lives. We thank you that you have given us your hope, your joy, your peace, your love, and you've given us the privilege of being your messengers, your very ambassadors, as though you were pleading through our very lips the words of grace and hope and peace to a hurting and lost world. So may we take seriously the privilege of being your sons and daughters and may we be the kingdom builders you created us to be and may we celebrate this morning all the goodness and all the love that you poured into our lives thank you for this opportunity to gather together in the midst of this, this wonderful facility you've given us but we gather together we are your house we are the place that you inhabit may you inhabit our praises and may you lord be glorified through our worship and through our praise to you this morning in jesus name and all god's people said Amen. Good uh, before we start, I promise David. Um, got word, David got word his um, Linda's son Scott was in a car accident and is being taken to an Altman Hospital that's in Canton. So we want to stop and just pray. She doesn't know if he's hurt, what's going on, anything about it. So let's stop and let's pray for Scott this morning. Gracious Heavenly Father, we want to lift up Scott to you and lift up Linda to you. She is anxious to know what's going on and probably on her way there herself. So, Lord, we don't know what happened. We don't know what transpired, but you do. You knew in the moments, even before the accident, how to protect God, how to provide what he needed, how to give him your grace, your peace for whatever he might be facing right now. So, Lord, we are asking, our request is that he would be fine, that there would be minimal or no injuries at all, be with the other people involved in this accident. We just pray that you would be 
with Linda, give her traveling mercies and safety as she goes. But above all else, may staff and Linda and all those involved feel your peace and your presence, knowing, Lord, that you have never left us without an advocate. You've never left us without your hand of protection and grace in our lives. And no matter what we go through, you're there with us, seeing us through, and always working for the very best of us, your sons and daughters. So we just give you praise and thanks and just ask that you be with them this day. May the news be good, but in all things, Lord, may you be lifted up in their lives and may you provide exactly what they need, exactly what they need. In Jesus' name we pray. God's people said. Amen. Well, let's open our hearts up to the Lord and what he would have uh, for us in scripture today. And our scripture is from Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. It says, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. And I guess that's it. I wasn't sure if it was any longer than that. So. <laughs> All right. Um, and we're going to be going to sing um, Only a God Like You. And only our Father can do all the wonderful things. He can um, have what his plans are for Scott. And so let's just uh, praise our Father today as we sing.
praise and just the openness of our hearts. So I just encourage you to worship him this morning. Uh, we're going to head into friendship time, so uh, go ahead and greet one another in the Lord. And if you see anybody who isn't here, go ahead and send them a text. <laughs>
reliability. Amen. The one and only true living God. This next song we're going to sing is called The Goodness of God. It says, what does the goodness of God mean? It says that God is good. It's not just what he does. It's who he is. And who he is, and this is the best part, because we can rely on him because he never changes. He's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. And I'm so thankful for that. It says, God is our refuge and our strength. Psalm 46. I'm going to repeat that. First verse. God is our refuge and our strength in ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. Verse 6. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. So no matter what we're going through today, it's a temporary thing, but the great, our great God is with us always. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations He has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Is he your fortress today? Is he your all in all? I pray that the goodness of God dwells deep within our hearts. Sing with us as we sing the goodness of God and the gift of grace.
Alice, if she comes, some of you can come and gather around her as well as we prepare to uh, just lift our voices to the Lord this morning. And let's just give Him the praise and the glory and the honor that is due to this morning. Let's lift up all of those who are in need, all of those who have experienced loss this year, all of those who have been in the middle of hardships, whether it's financial or work or marriages or relationships. Let's just lift all of our, all those things, the Lord, that we've tried to move, that we've tried to work, we've tried to control, and today let's just put it in His hands. The God whose mercy and goodness never cease to follow us all the days of our lives. Psalm 23 says, Prepare the right before me in the midst of my enemies. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. Father, we give him thanks this morning that your goodness and your mercy follow us. That there is never a moment in this life that we need to fear or to doubt that you are with us and that you are able and that you will provide. And Lord, may we instead of telling you how to provide, may we just trust in your provision. May we trust in your ways because your word says your ways are higher than our ways. Your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Lord, we can't understand what you understand, but we can choose to trust you where we can't see the past. So, Lord, this morning we lift up Caleb to you, Lord. We don't know what he's going through, but you do. You know what he is like. You know what he's asked to be known for. And in his past, he's gone and he's gone to you. Faithful loving grandmother, your servant who has led her children and her children's children, Lord, to know you and to know your goodness follows them. Lord, may he see those who have gone before him and know with certainty that he can choose to put his trust in you. Lord, we anoint God and forgive in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit that the sure hope and the certain trust that your will is being accomplished in his life. It has been and it will be, Lord. May he choose to trust the path to you where he can't see you. May he simply lift his feet and move him forward as you would lead in the steps of his path to him. And we know that that path always leads deeper, that he always leads closer to you and to your eternal glory, to your eternal reward for those who have chosen to put their trust in you. So Lord, we just give you thanks and praise for what you've done and what you're going to do. May your will be accomplished in Caleb's life now more than ever. May you find your peace where he is at today. Father, I lift up all those who are here today, those who have been here for a long time, those who may have come in for the first time, those who have never experienced, Lord, uh, what, what it is that you have for them, but feel the deep yearning in their soul, Lord, that you are drawing all of us closer. May we just sort of let go. May we not resist your spirit as you move us. May we not try to figure things out every time. You gave us a break, you didn't give us wisdom, but maybe we can't understand, we can just trust in you. Lord, I lift up all of those who, who have lost loved ones this year, all of those, Lord, it's been heavy in my heart who experience in life without someone that's been there with them for so long. Lord, you know better than anyone what it is to, to lose your son, you gave your son for us, and may him for grace we find the comfort and peace to know that those who have trusted to us, we can trust back to you, trust in your grace until we see them again. And Lord, for those of us who remain, may we be faithful. May we be faithful not only for our sake, but the sake of our spouses, the sake of our children, the sake of our grandchildren, for the sake of our neighbors and the stranger on the street. May you find us faithful. May you be so lifted in these lives that all who cross our path would look to us and say, what's different about you, Lord? May you give us the grace to open our mouths and may you fill us Fill our mouths with the words of hope and life and peace and the gospel, Lord, and that sets the prisoner free. And we love you this day. We give you praise and we give you all the glory and the honor. May you continue to be lifted up in this service, lifted up in our lives, and may you draw others into yourself. In Jesus' name we pray, God's people say, Amen. You know, I love the part of that song where it says, I know this is a new song for a lot of you, but it says, Your goodness is running after. He is always pursuing us. Amen? He always is there. He wants us to have goodness for him. Let's sing that part and then we'll sing the chorus.
All right, you may be seated. And uh, we're going to just uh, do a little business. And for those of you who have never been through an annual church election, boy, are you in for some fun. Wow, have I got an opportunity for you. Uh, let me just say to you, there's a reason that these things are important, and I know they're not as exciting as other things. Like, I mean, I know most of you would rather hear me preach for two hours, at least, than maybe do an election, or maybe not. Um, I got to build myself up sometimes, you know. So, uh, the reason this is important is because the Church of Nazarene recognizes the membership of the local church and then the church abroad. And I heard it, my brother-in-law did a little booklet on membership. One of the things that, that he put in there I thought was instructive and it was helpful is why is there a membership in the local church? Well, how many of you, I know it's baseball season, some of you like baseball, I'm not a big baseball fan, but, but some of you love to sit there um, hours and hours and watch paint drag, I mean watch baseball. But there's a reason that a baseball team, or foot, there's a reason they have a roster. Why do they have a roster? So the coach can know who he can put in the game. So he can know who he can count on to, to, to hit the ball, or to field the ball, or to run the ball. There's, there's a reason that there's a roster on those team sports. Membership is simply a roster that says, yeah, count me in, coach. I'm here. I'm willing. It's not about privilege. It's really about willingness to take responsibility. And that's why we have membership. That's why we have elections. That's why we have this. So um, if you don't know, and if you don't know you're a member, whether or not you're a member, you're probably not. But that's okay because, and I said it before, and I'll say it again, once you walk in the door of this place, you are a member. You're a member of the family. And that's the membership that most counts to me, and I think that's the membership that most counts to all of us here. Um, you know, we had some, took in some new members this past, um, past couple of weeks, which was good, which was awesome. So if you are not a member, um, I, I, what I'd like to do is to do maybe, um, I don't want anybody to feel left out, and I should have thought about this before, but I'd like to give this, um, I'm going to have David, is going to be um, our board of uh, teller, our lead teller. He's going to pass the ballots out to the group. You're going to get these ballots if you're a member, if you're over the age of 15. Uh, you can mark those ballots when you get them, and then you can turn them back in, uh, hold them up, and then the uh, tellers will come collect them. We're going to hold those, and then we're going to wait till 1 o'clock, and we're going to come and, and count those. Um, we've tried to make it as easy as possible. Um, for you, and I, I got to do a read a report, and we'll have to nominate this ballot. But you know, there's several places where you see the total to elect is six, and fortunately, the total that ran is six. <laughs> so, if you just don't like the choice of those six, feel free to insert your name as a write-in if if you're uh, if you're there. We didn't put a write-in slot, but that's always an option when we don't have any more than the minimum amount needed to elect. Um, and I've been grateful as a pastor here. We've had some great um, leadership and great people. The thing I love about our church, it doesn't matter if you're on this ballot. It doesn't matter if you're elected. You know, when it comes time to do the work, you guys do the work. We get together. We just do what needs to be done. And that's the most important part of it. So there's a report of the nominating committee, which is uh, myself and a group of people who get together. And read a bit about this. Um, and so I'm going to read this report, and then as a board, as a congregation, we will uh, take a, a uh, motion to accept this report as written. The board has already approved this report. It is the minutes for the uh, nominating committee meeting, March 16, 2021. Pastor Jan Wimmel presided over the meeting. Members present were Steve Duckworth, Lori Selman, Sue Mellon, Jimmy Smith, and Nancy Wallet. The ballot will be constructed in alphabetical order. All steps will be taken according to the Church of Nazarene Manual. Uh, Sue Millen will contact all nominees for their decisions. Nominees listed on the next page respectively submitted Sue Millen for the secretary. And the nominations for church board were Jane Barnes, Steve Duckworth, Dolores Helen, Cody Phillips, Jenny Smith, Nancy Wallet. Nominations for delegates, delegates to district assembly. Haley Taylor, Dennis Millenum, Don Rossbach, Ruth Rossbach, Joe Shreffler, Jenny Smith. Nomination for NY President, yes, no, Will Jessup. Nomination for SDMI, Superintendent, that's Life Groups, yes, no, Sue Millenum. Nominations for delegates to the NMI Convention, Dolores Hellman, Keela Knight, Eddie Millenum, Kate Morgan, Sarah Morris, Wayne Morris, Joe Shreffler. Is that all the report? No, all the okay, so do I have a motion uh, to receive the report as submitted? 
We have a motion, we have a second. All in favor say aye. All opposed, the same side. Okay. Um, do I have, I would like to make the uh, voting, you got to set the parameters for the voting bar. So I would like, a, a, is there a motion to set the voting bar as all of the upstairs sanctuary, foyer, and education wing? So move. Second. All in favor say aye. All opposed, the same sign. All right, so I'm going to ask the board of tellers to come, or you guys come on up. So if you are a member of the church and you are 15 and over, would you stand or raise your hand? Just go ahead and stand, maybe you guys get a ballot. Yeah. Um, the nomination, just so you know, we nominated more than six. Um, so each of these categories, there was probably double the number to be elected, but um, we put on the ballot those who accepted their nomination to run for these positions. So that's why it's a little thin, full sparse. Uh, it's, it's spelled out there, but the first um, church board to your term elects six, there are six listed. Um, try to figure out who you want to vote for. Delegates to District Assembly elect six. There's six listed. So again, try to figure out who you want to vote for. Uh, I'm going to throw a curveball. Delegates to NMI, that's Missions, and SDMI, that's Life Group Sunday School. There's six to be elected, but there's seven listed. So, um, so you definitely have to make a choice. And then yes, no on this, uh, the, the next two. So every year we're trying to get more people to, to sign up and to run, and it's always a challenge. I know it's, it's tough, people don't necessarily want to run, they don't want to be political, but with us, it's pretty non-political. So, if you get your ballot, go ahead and sit down, you can mark it. If you need a pen or something, uh, borrow one from somebody close to you or ask for one. We, when your ballots are done, can you pass them to the center, and the uh, Will and David will collect the, the ballots. And again, for those watching online, uh, the ballot, the voting is open until 1 p.m. Uh, so we'll have somebody here in the foyer. If you're a member and you want to come vote, you're welcome to do that. We'll collect those and announce. Uh, we'll try to announce board members next week. I wonder who they might be. Uh, <laughs> the nail biter, that's, that's the close one. So next week, while you're filling those ballots up, um, we were going to kind of try to do it today, um, but uh, Sue got her second uh, um, vaccination and it really kind of messed with her this week, and, and we didn't remember to uh, send out messages. We've talked about a board meeting. Next week, we're going to ask all last year's uh, chairs and, and uh, those who headed committees as chairs they're going to come uh, during the service next week. Can you just give a year to review? Just a few words about highlights, about what we did in hospitality, what we did in buildings and grounds, and what we did as a part of life groups, and what we did as missions, all those sort of things. So we're just going to kind of next year just be just a celebration of all the good things. And, and if you have something to celebrate in the year 2020, that's the reason to celebrate. Amen? But God has not quit doing great things among us while we've been away, while people have been dealing with pandemics and layoffs and, and struggles and separation and anxieties and fears and loss. In the midst of all that, God has still been vital and active and moving in our midst. And so that's what we're going to be doing next week is celebrating God's goodness to us and the good things that he's done in spite of a year that is straight out of like a horror movie or something, right? And I'm going to spend just a few minutes with you, and some people say, I can't preach a sermon in 13 minutes or less. I say, it's on. <laughs> Take your time. Take your time. All right, thank you again. Um, so I was thinking about today, and thinking about elections, and really thinking about just some of what's been going on this last year. We are going to get back to the book of Luke. 
not next week, but the week after, we're going to pick back up. So if you want to start reading again in the book of Luke, chapter 19, uh, we're going to be talking about Zacchaeus uh, a little bit next week. So uh, uh, just get your Bibles and read for that. But as I, especially like this week and just just through through COVID, just through this whole experience, it has become incredibly, I've become incredibly aware of just how vital relationships are and how God has created us for relationships. I mean, if I were to ask you today, what has been the hardest thing over this last year about dealing with COVID, you would say it's been what? It's isolation. It's isolation. Did, did you know, and I forget the country, and it's one of the uh, Netherlands or somewhere over there. Now, it used to be the case, and I haven't looked recently, but it used to be that they had only one form of jail sentences. All of prison or all jail was served isolation. There was a solitary confinement. They, they, they had some of the lowest prison times, I mean, the lowest amount of time to serve from the different crimes, but anyone who served in their prison system served solitary confinement. That was it. And do you know what the, what the study, when I read it, and this has probably been at least 10 years ago, the study showed that they also had the lowest rate of, how do you say that? Recidivism. So in other words, the fewest amount of people that went back to their crimes. And the correlation was men. Well, the, the, the correlation was determined that there's nothing harder on the human psyche than being isolated, being alone. And when you serve solitary confinement, it's like 23 out of 24 hours a day, you are by yourself. You know, people talk about heaven and hell, and, and I've, I've shared it before, but I'll share it again. People talk about hell, and it'll be where there's fire, and those sort of things. And, I think ACDC, one of their songs, talks about, you know, going to hell, but hey, I'm going to be with my friends, so, you know, I'd rather go to hell with my friends and heaven with a bunch of, you know, prudes or whatever. But here's what I think about hell. What, what I think of I, the idea of hell, when I read scripture and I understand how God has created us in, in my conversations with our Heavenly Daddy, my idea of hell would be this. Imagine having a full sense of who you are, having your memories, having the ability to think, Having the ability to, to, in your mind, replay everything that has transpired in your life up to this point, but being literally completely alone. And when I say alone, no sight, no sound, no smell, no taste, no touch, just completely locked in the utter darkness and the utter isolation of your own mind and your own thoughts in eternity. Can you imagine how tormenting that would be? I mean, I can't go to Circle K without spending two hours talking to somebody. You know? But imagine it. Fully aware. It's the ultimate self-realization. Fully aware of yourself, but completely cut off from any form of communication or connection to any other living soul and left with those memories and the full awareness of your earth. That, to me, is hell as ugly and as brutal as I could possibly imagine. And I think that the reason is, is because God created us for community. God created us to connect to each other. God created us to, to gather together. And, and sometimes people say, well, you know, church, preachers just want to get people to church. You know, gathering together here isn't to make, isn't to get God to let you into heaven. The reason you come to this place on a Sunday morning isn't so that you can kind of get brownie points with the Heavenly Father. The reason we gather together is because God made us to gather together. And church isn't solely defined by Sunday mornings. It is, it is not gathering together just here. It is every time that we get together. Every time somebody drives by and they, they stop. I, I bought Shelly um, a new fire pit the other night. And so we go over there and I'm putting it together in the dark. And, and Dave is driving down, you know, Parkview there, and he's yelling at me, what are you doing? And I said, well, you're just going to sit in that truck and watch me to come help me. So, so Dave came and held the flashlight for me. He could see everything fine, although often wasn't all that I was looking at. But, 
But it's just the experience of getting together and Shelly saying, don't burn paper in there. What am I doing? I put a big box in there and I shove a bunch of sticks and I pour oil on it and I get in the flame. It was awesome, wasn't it, Dave? Especially when I put through the big pieces of cardboard on her and it flamed up. And then Shelly thought I was setting the tree on fire. And, it was, and we sat there for you know two hours just watching a fire burn. That's church. Coming together as a community, coming together over every opportunity that we have to get together. That's church. You know, Proverbs. Um, what's the first one, Cody? Proverbs 18:24. One who has unreliable friends soon comes to ruin. Think about that. One who has, have you ever have you ever told all your friends that you're gonna move and you asked who could help? <laughs> unreliable friends soon reveal themselves because I've noticed that if you invite everybody over for steaks they're usually in for that so I've learned what you have to do is invite them to steaks but when they show up you say oh first we gotta do this moving and then just but he says there's one a friend who stays closer than a brother and it's that connection with Jesus Christ, it's the connection with the Holy Spirit that connects us to each other. And that is what is so important. And the second scripture I want to bring up to you is, is uh, Psalm 133. And he says, how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. And I'll tell you a little bit of what that looks like to me and why I've seen it. Um, yesterday, I decided to have an adventure. And I invited some of my closest friends to be in on the adventure. Has anybody been on a jam adventure? <laughs> yeah. No matter what it is, it's not just going to be to do something. It's going to be to have an adventure. Amen. And so, so Dustin, Dustin, I can't believe Dustin had never moved a garage on a trailer. In the of the who, not, who hasn't done that? So, you know, our sister had a need. Building needs to be gone. We got a need. We need. You know, we need to clean out the rooms where we've got puppet stuff, and we've got PBS stuff, and we've got, you know, choir stuff, we got all this stuff that we, we save a ton of money because we, we don't throw it away, we build it and set it up, and we try to save it so that we have it there for the next PBS or whatever, and so, but it takes up a lot of space, especially when you have, like, really big rooms. I mean, the, the, it broke my heart when I had to drag my 20-plus foot tree that I made out of plaster and, and chicken wire and... And I had to cut it all up because it just wasn't anywhere to store the dumb thing. It was just too big. And so we were able to, to load up this building. And so yesterday, we went through a process of picking up a garage, putting it on a trailer. We got it up to the, you know, on our, on our props at four feet. And then it fell off our props. And it didn't shatter. So we're like, okay, well, that's good. Um, we found a baby squirrel. We saved the baby squirrel's life because I put it in a milk jug. And Marcus took it and he sold it to somebody for 10 bucks who's going to raise it to <laughs> You don't know what you missed? Huh? Maybe you it, No. But, but it was fun. Because I've never seen an elevated squirrel before. So that was fun. And the belly dropping was sort of fun. Especially because none of us were in it. Or it just one on us. You know? And there's some pictures. Kids, but my favorite pictures when we're unloading it here. We, we stacked up these cement blocks. But the blocks that were like this, by the time we got the back of the building down, they were like this. And they literally were holding on by that much without the front collapsing. It was exciting. So, uh, Ken Senior has a picture of it. But what was important to me yesterday wasn't the fact that we didn't get killed or hurt, mostly. Um, we, we didn't destroy too much. Um, but the thing that was awesome about yesterday was, was having Dustin and, and Marcus and having Kenton Junior and Senior and having Bodie and Wayne and, and just everybody kind of pitching in and doing the work and, and it was pretty cool. I, you know, I, I mean, I really was taking the rest of my life because I was in the back of Ken Junior's truck as he was driving a trailer with a 12 by 20 building on it following the police escort that we had. I mean, we got Chloe and a PD to come out and give us an escort to block traffic. And, and, what was valuable about that experience wasn't what we got done. What was valuable about that experience was being together. Being together. That's what's important. And so when you talk about church, you talk about friend, you talk about living in unity, I want you to understand, God loves it when we come together on Sunday morning here. But where he really, really enjoys it is when we're having fun out moving buildings or we're having fun doing a VBS or we're having fun Whatever we're doing, wherever we're at, and, you know, I still remember cutting down the fresh trees, and I told Joanne, I'm going to try to get you tomorrow to take the top out of the other tree. 
Okay? But I remember being up in the bucket, looking down, and there was so many guys from church running around like ants. Now, my first thought was, oh my Lord, someone's going to get killed. Jesus, help us. So, so it was chaos, but the memories we had. I mean, Joe, Joe almost got rolled over by a log. I mean, I, 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 that was so good. And, and Joe and Mark, Joe and Mark were directing traffic. I remember how many times I thought there was going to be a head-on collision. And uh, the time that Joe almost smashed the hood of an old lady's car who just waved at him and kept going, she wouldn't stop. You know? And I think about those things, and the value in that experience wasn't what we got done. We took down five trees, and I only crushed the bridge fence a little bit. But the experience was being together, being the body, being the people of God. I remember I got that one lived down that had a hornet's nest up in it, and Dave started to go over there, and I'm up in the bucket and say, no, no, close! Dave finally saw the bees, and he backed off. But it's all the times that we are together as a community that are important. And even simple things like a church election or running for or becoming member uh, members, it's so that we have the people to do the things that need to be done so we can be a community, not just on a Sunday morning at 10.30, not just to gather together for prayer around the altar, not just in these times. It's any time that we're together as the body of Christ. And that's where God is up to us. In Hebrews, and I'm throwing this one on you, Cody, but it's Hebrews chapter 10, and I think it's verse 25. And you've heard it, and a lot of, a lot of pastors have used this verse to beat people up to get them to come to church. And it says, um, Do not forsake the assembly of yourselves together, as some are in the habit of doing. But even all the more, as you see the day, the day of judgment, the day of you know the end times, all the more as you see the day approaching, <clears throat> he says, gather together so that you can encourage one another and spur one another on in love to good deeds. Now some people read that verse and they say, don't forsake your son and get guy. And I gotta admit, I've probably done it a time or two, pastors use that to beat people up and say, well, if you're not in church, if you're not gathering together in church, then you're, you're, you're not honoring God. Well, yeah, it's important to be together in church in this place, but it's more important to be together as the church. Now, I don't see in that passage in Hebrews where it says, um, where it tells us about being gathered at the house of worship. It just says, don't quit getting together. And whether it's to get together to watch a ball game, or whether it's to get together to go see each other's kids play sports, or whether it's to get together to, to take care of some, some projects that need to be done at somebody's house, maybe mow some grass for somebody, or, or clean some gutters, or cut some trees, or, or, or do some painting, or whatever. It's most important that we gather. We don't quit gathering together. And all the more. And I love what he says. He says, so you can encourage each other. So you can tell each other that it's important to know that you're not alone. In a year of such loss, in a year of so many people hurting over so many things, I I've said this before and I'll say it again, one of the most important things you can do when you gather with somebody as this, as this group, as you gather here or houses, is to learn that you're not alone. And no matter what you're going through, and no matter what you're suffering through, you're not alone. You are with others who are on the same journey, and you can find strength and encouragement knowing that you're not alone. And I said, somebody told me this one time, it's been years ago, they talked about, um, they struggled some with getting up and coming and being, gathering here on Sunday mornings. It was this struggle and challenge. And one of the things they said is, well, you know, whether I'm watching online or whether, you know, I read my Bible, I get the things, you know, I'm still close to God. And I get that, I understand the personal issue. But this was my thought and, and my response to them. But what if God didn't want you to come to church because you needed to be more Christian or you needed to hear the sermon or, or you needed to, 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 uh, to take communion. What if God was wanting you to gather here today because there was somebody here who he needed you to be a light, to be an encouragement? Maybe it's God brought somebody here that he's wanting to use you because you've been there, you've done that, you've experienced that loss, you've experienced that tragedy, you've gone through that hurt, and maybe he wants you here not to build you up, but maybe to use you as a means of building into somebody else's life. And that's why the friendship, the, the connection, the, the camaraderie, the community of the body of Christ is so vital, it's so important. And if that only exists in this building on Sunday mornings at 10.30 to 11.30, folks, we are missing the point of being the body of Christ. You know? 
Your body is your body 24-7, 365. Amen? Amen? And what happens when one of your part of your body decides to check out? You know? My eyes, they've been revolting on me a little bit. And I would take that, right? Because I need them. I can't afford for one part of the body and the body of Christ is the same way. No matter what role you think you play, you're a part of this family. You're a vital part of this family. You're needed. You're, you're, you're what makes us tick. And Corinthians says, there's many members, of the, many members, but there's one body. Amen? Amen? And I've always said, well, my body has boogers, and so somebody's got to be the booger. Amen? <laughs> you know who you are. That's mostly me. So this morning, I did an almost 13 minutes. Okay, it's 16 minutes technically right now. But I just wanted to encourage you this morning, especially with the church elections. Folks, we are in this together. Amen? Amen. And that's the way we're designed to be. And I'm grateful that God's given us technology to connect to those who can't be here. But some who can't be here on a Sunday morning, some of us here are capable of going there. And maybe we need to make sure that we don't forget those who are kind of confined to their homes or confined to a nursing home or who just physically can't get out and move the way they want. I would love to visit everybody in this church. And I know that's one of the traditional roles of a pastor. It's his job, so I've been told. I didn't grow up in a church, so I didn't learn these things. Um, and sometimes I, I find it interesting that people are waiting for the pastor to come and visit them. Folks, just look around the amount of people in this room. If I took one night and gave everybody in here one evening of my time, how many evenings would I have left for the rest of the year? Because there's 365 days in a year. I could easily burn up an entire year and get to less than half of our congregation, literally. I, I don't know if you've noticed this about me, but I'm not real good at sitting still. I'm, I'm, I, I don't say that that's a good thing. I'm just saying it's the way God made me, and I finally learned to embrace it. That's why I love it when we do things like move garages and have a bunch of people together because I love the community of it. I love the experience of the community. It's, it's a plus when nobody gets hurt and the building actually makes it. But the most important thing, you know, if the building hadn't made it, we'd have had a great bonfire. I mean, it would have been awesome, but first we'd have rescued this world, hopefully. Or we'd have a great meal. We don't know. Not much. <laughs> but the most important thing that I can tell you about being a part of the body of Christ is being a part of an incredible family. And that is never limited to the time we spend here, it's always a part of our lives, the sum total of who we are. So folks, look around, see who isn't here, you know who can't get here, make some time in your schedule in the next month to just go say hi to them. Make some time to be a part of a project that's going on. Come to me and say, if I were gonna have a painting party, what could we paint? And I think- Sandy wants to live here for Sandy, right there. You know what? I, you're saying that in jest, but the cat's out of the bag. So I'm counting on some of you to go find Ray and Sandy. Now, I'm not going to promise you that it's just going to be the walls that get painted. You know? I've, I've seen some of our painters that be walls. So oh, well, there you go. No drop walls needed. But that literally is what I'm talking about. Get a few people, get together, and go do it. There's some, some of you love to paint. Who loves to paint? Awesome. I hate to paint. Sandy needs some love to paint painters to come and see her. And folks, that's what needs to happen. That's what needs to happen as the body of Christ. Painting, helping, cleaning, the little things. It's just about community and being good. All right, you're, you're taking me over. All right. So, uh, yeah, you're making me run late. Oh my gosh. Now I'm up to like four, almost 20 minutes. Oh my gosh. I almost hit it. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time to be here. Lord, I thank you that we're part of such an incredible family. That you created us for this community. That you created us to be your sons and daughters. You, you lavished your love on us. You, you, you showered us with gifts and abilities. And each one unique and different. But each member of the body vital and important. And a role to play, Lord. We're not all called to serve in the same way, but we're all called to serve. May we take advantage of the incredible privilege to be a family, to know that not only do we have a friend that sticks closer than a brother in Jesus, but this family sticks closer 
than a brother. And even if we've struggled with hardships or loss or tragedies, Lord, we're not alone in that suffering, that we have friends and a family and a community to come alongside us and to encourage us and to help us to get through. And my prayer to you, Lord, is that we wouldn't limit our thoughts of the church to a building on uh, one location, uh, one day a week at a certain time. May we expand the opportunity we have to be the body, to be the church, by gathering in each other's homes, by gathering in public places, by gathering wherever there is a need or an opportunity to fellowship, and to fellowship while doing the work of building your kingdom, Lord. May the community around us look at this great, great take group of unique people. You called us peculiar, no reason why, the, the reason why is obvious. It's because we love each other's company and we love to be a part of doing what you want to do in us and through us. May we relish those times and take advantage of those opportunities. May you go with us as we leave this place today. May you get Sandy's living room painted this week, Lord. And may you help us to do the work of the kingdom, whether it's in painting, whether it's in serving in physical means, or just reading a book, or going alongside, or visiting somebody when they're just lonely. May we be sensitive to your spirit as you lead us to serve one another, to spur one another on, to love and to good deeds. And may you keep encouraging us and empowering us and giving us the opportunities to gather together wherever it is as the people of God, as the body of Christ. May your blessing be upon us and on those who have not been able to be with us, those who are at home, those who are connecting in other ways, Lord. May you unite us as never before as the body of Christ. And as we leave this place, we you. Help us to praise you, Thomas. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Ask that you be praying also for Larry Veraducci. He's on the prayer chain. I should have prayed for this morning. Let's stop and pray for Larry as he's in the hospital. Father, we just pray that you have your hand upon Larry this, this morning as well. May you just uh, continue to give him the doctors, the nurses, the medicine, the treatment he needs to get well, to get better, to get uh, out of the hospital and get back. I missed him back there at the coffee bar this morning. May you just uh, let him know that he's loved, he's a part of this body, and may you help us just to give him the courage and the strength he needs and at any time that he would need help as he gets out of the hospital. And all the others, Lord, who I know I haven't mentioned by name, but I just pray for each and every one, Lord, who's been struggling and needing your help. May we be your hands and feet to them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Life groups are going on.